In the midst of all the heavy-duty news of the last few weeks, I was delighted to hear a report about a recent study. And the study basically said, since the time of the pandemic, people have been talking to themselves more. Little background. Most people talk to themselves. And lots of people talk to themselves out loud. Psychologists feel that it's actually pretty healthy uh, because it might get those concepts outside of your head out here so you can deal with them. And sometimes when we talk to ourselves, we don't do it directly. We talk to pets. We talk to plants. We talk to the, the printer and the computer that don't seem to do what we want them to do. We could be like Tom Hanks and talk to a, a volleyball named Wilson. I find myself talking to myself even before a pandemic. Uh, little things like, Herb, you really should have done those dishes last night, not left them in the sink. Sometimes we yell at each other. Sometimes we give ourselves permission. Go ahead and take that second dessert. The thing about the study that most interested me, though, was the why. Why are people talking to themselves more during this time of pandemic? And the answer that was given was because we're so isolated, we're less likely to be around other people, that we simply need to hear our own voice a little bit more. Humans are social people. In fact, it's part of what makes us human. And a big part of being social is to communicate. And our primary way of communicating is through conversation. We need to hear other people. We need to hear ourselves as well. Hearing leads to listening. They're not the same. Hearing itself in itself is tough. Uh, sometimes there's so many things going on we don't hear. I don't know how many times over the years uh, one of the spouses will say to me, often in front of the other spouse, my spouse has selective hearing loss. It's usually when they're trying to get their attention uh, and the other person says, well, I heard you. Well, what would you say? Oh, well, say it again. And of course, parents say this about their kids as well. Last night, I was saying this at, uh, at Mass, and there was a family right here with uh, three kids. And uh, the parents kept elbowing those kids. You don't hear us. Hearing is a mechanical thing where we get rid of some of the other noise so that we allow the sound to come into our ears. Listening depends on hearing, but it's so much more. Listening means being attentive. Listening means paying attention, not just to the words, but even the message behind the words. Listening means willing to respond. So many times when we give the impression we're listening, what we're really doing is we're formulating our rebuttal or our argument or our response. Listening also means there has to be an openness to take it in. With all of that said, let's go back to the first book of Samuel, the first reading today. Uh, thank you, Bob, so the way you read it very, very powerfully. Here is Samuel. He's a kid. He's sleeping there. Samuel, Samuel. He hears. And he goes to Eli. No, I didn't call you. He goes to Eli a second time, a third time. Eli is the wise figure who tells him, it's not me, it's the Lord. So then he adds another word. He doesn't say that you just hear the voice. Samuel says, speak, Lord. Your servant is listening. And that is the beginning of his whole life as a prophet. He's listening. So the question for us is, does God still speak to us? And the second question is, do we hear? Do we listen? Do we pay attention? Well, first of all, God does still speak to us. Maybe in the dead of the night, I don't know, uh, often through the voice of someone else. But what we know for sure is God can break through anything, even a tragedy or a crisis. But very likely, God is going to speak to us 
when we make room for God to speak to us, when we avail ourselves, when we are open and willing to tune in, if we don't do that, how, how can God's voice be even heard, much, much less listened to? We have to listen. That takes work. And that also means that we have to set aside other things. We have to believe that somehow it's the best thing we can do is to provide time to listen to God. There's that old adage which uh, is very powerful. If you pray first, there's always time for everything else you need to do. If you do everything else first, there's never time left to pray, which is probably more true than we want it to be. So sometimes we have to simply set aside, a set aside time before everything else. Now in the gospel reading, we have John the Baptist in his very humble spirit giving way to Jesus. He says, there's the Lamb of God, which is a very powerful statement. So the two disciples, one of which was Andrew, started following Jesus. And then Jesus invited them to come to his place. Where do you stay? Come and see. What I like is the fact that it says, and they went and they spent the day. Now, be honest, in the deep recesses of your heart, probably every one of us at one time or another has thought, wouldn't it be great just to spend time with Jesus, to hang out with Jesus? It, they, they took the time. They made the time. They said, we'll stay with you. Now, what did they talk about? It might have been tempting to talk about the Browns beating the Steelers. I mean, that's a miracle. But I don't think they talked about that. And first of all, I think they listened. And maybe Jesus was even talking about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is at hand. Maybe he talked about his mission. Maybe he was calling them to follow him. Maybe he was calling them to repentance. But they listened and they stayed with him. That can still happen if we're willing to tune in to the Lord. The other day I was on a Zoom session. We, we do a number of those around here. And there was a woman who started talking. And I, I know what she was going to say was probably very important. She was very animated. I don't read lips. And finally we got her attention to unmute herself. Sometimes we have to unmute God. We've muted God. And we don't allow the voice to come through. But when the voice comes through, we have to be ready to respond and say, Speak, Lord. We, your servants, are listening.